Hey. Hi guys. <laughs> so for the special reading uh, Heidi for you for you know, um, recording a lot of times voice acting is so if you guys do a lot of group recording though, because it seems like you can play with each other a lot. We don't. I would love to. I mean, there was a time last season where um, the actor that played Brad and I, we recorded separately, but neither of us like nailed a really crucial part. I guess we didn't do very good acting. So they brought us in together, which is nice to have someone there. But, um, but yeah, usually it's all love. <laughs> I record. I, I always do group records, even if it's by myself. <laughs> so, uh, and you've seen me do this several mm -hmm. times. I bring uh, different wardrobe pieces, and a wig. It's uh, all you, but it's different uh, characters. All different. <laughs> supporting, <laughs> all supporting your craft. Yeah, that is funny. Like on this show, I've never been in there with anybody. Do yeah. they ever do multiple? Yeah. 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 If you do bad acting like that, one thing. Yeah. Yeah. It is funner though. To me, it's, it's more fun. Well, with them though, because they let you, like, they bounce. They were like, they like to play a lot while you're in the booth, yeah. so that's cool. That's a good idea. Yeah, but it's a bummer to know that technically Cooch would have a scene with Sienna or other characters you play. So I'm like, I don't get to do it with them unless we revolt. Yeah, we could revolt. Yeah. If you guys are suggesting we revolt, we'll do it now. <laughs> on purpose be really bad. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> How will they know it's on purpose? <laughs> we get that it don't be too bad though, because they might not be really Just bad, bad enough. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the role you play in the Christmas special that's coming up? I can tell you everything about it. <laughs> Uh, this is a role that's never been seen before. <laughs> it's the role of a guy named Santa Claus. Now, I had to do a lot of... There's no research to be done because this character's brand new. He's never been seen before. <laughs> so I had to come up with the idea myself. I was like, I want my character to wear red. I think it would be good if he was friendly and... Uh, for and lack they... of a better word, I invented this word. Jolly. I want him to be <laughs> jolly. No, it's great. Uh, your character wishes me into being, basically, right? Yeah. And suddenly, I'm there. And I don't know who I am, really, or what the hell I'm doing. All I know is I have this bag. I don't know how much you can tell. Just a little... little I just, no one's listening. Just, <laughs> just act out the whole story. I have this magic bag is probably all I can say. But I will tell you this. It makes you realize that Santa's job is a hellish job it takes it's he's still spreading joy out there but his personal job is a hellish job i'm not quite sure how much i can say other than that but i'll call you later today. <laughs> everything so i'm kind of curious because you've done uncle ruckus in the past you've, you've done uh bebop and teenage mutant ninja turtles a lot of very very cartoonish voices is this more for you like a walk in the park because you can do what you're doing now just your normal voice or is this no also i actually the sound i do he's more this guy you know uh the closest voice i do that's closest to me is i, I play the the dad of Doc McStuffins on a cartoon called Doc McStuffins. That's the closest one I do just to my regular speaking voice. Everything's always some kind of character. Not as character you write as Uncle Ruckus, but it's more just a kind of deeper, simpler version of, of myself. So and it's definitely fun because I can kind of steal all those Santas that I've heard people do and let people kind of hear something familiar in their voice, but then he's cussing and complaining about <laughs> his balls getting squeezed as he's going up the chimney, you know? And then really, really screw with children's minds. My job is to screw with kids' minds. Following up on what you just said, were there any certain versions of, you know, Santa Claus? We've seen so many that you put on and kind of played off of, like that particular version. Yeah, I, it, to me, it's those, those, I love watching Christmas commercials. It's always that, like, that, that happy Coca-Cola kind of guy, you know. It's that seemingly carefree kind of guy that I was trying to steal his voice for. And then realize how much pain is actually behind his voice. So it wasn't one in particular, but it was definitely just that, oh, that guy, that voice that makes everyone feel good. And what would you like this year? That guy. <laughs>
a guy who you feel comfortable when he says, come sit on my lap. <laughs> and you don't, you don't even question it. All right, so, yeah, I will come and sit on you. <laughs> Which is kind of wrong when you think about it. But it feels so right. <laughs> so, what are you excited about for season two for fans to see? Is there anything to talk about? Um, well, I'm excited that she departs, I feel like, a little bit in the first part of season one. She was a little overly sexed up. I think she was in heat. <laughs> um, and just kind of seemed uh, raw and loud and overly sexed up. And in this season, I think she's more vulnerable, just wants some buddies, you know, like, uh, just like her eyes are open to the world and she's finding out new things, so everything's just like, sure, let's try it, let's do it, you know, like, I guess a cuter side of cute, which doesn't sound... <laughs> that sounds... Not, it just sounds not cute, but it is cute. Cuter yeah, side of cute. Cuter side of cute. So not, so not, not a real super cute, cute, like... Not so cute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Still cute, Yeah, it's not, not the cute. No, not the cute. No. Gary, <laughs> yeah, you talked about the origin of your voices and the voice for Santa. Cooch's voice is whacked out. It's so great. <laughs> what is it you that with her? How did you come up with that? I used to just annoy um, Zeb, the creator, <laughs> with that voice. I would just do it in the car, and I think it actually started as just this like trashy woman who was obsessed with Joe Pesci, but she said Joe Pesci. <laughs> and um, what would she like, say about Joe? She was like, um, you know Joe Pesci. He, you know him and Scorsese. They met. They met in the movie Mumbo, and then that's when they started. They would talk. And then that's when they started talking about movies. And, they, and he would get pesky with just a dishwasher and boogie. And, <laughs> and so we just like get to a point where he was just like, shut the fuck up. And, um, and then he was writing the show. And I think the, the Cooch character, I don't even know if her name was Cooch at first, but she was like a Catwoman archetype. And she was supposed to have like a sexy Catwoman voice. And then as he was writing it, that's when he was just like, hey, you remember that shit garbage voice? You <laughs> Would you try that? He was like, I've been trying to sell it to the network and they've been shaking their heads, but maybe I can record you. So then he recorded me riffing. I think I was riffing on like pumpkins or something at that point. <laughs> Just talking nonsense, which is what she is. And is that a true story about Joe Pesci? Pesci? That is. Pesci that is and... completely true to Pesci. And then De Niro happened to stumble into that buka. Wow. And then that's how all and three they good all fellas came from there. Yeah. You know which buka? Upper East Side buka. Yeah. Upper East, yeah. Wow. The Upper East Side. Yeah. 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 I'm curious about the Christmas special. Was that something you found out about before you started working on season two, or was that kind of you were already in the process of season two, and then they came to? We're doing Christmas special. I think it was. I think the Christmas special was the first thing we heard about, and then season two. Yeah. What was your reaction when you heard that you're doing, you know, a Christmas special? From said, no. I, yeah. <laughs> I she did not do any special. <laughs> she called me and said, "I will not do this." No. Because and I said, "You're right." Yeah. Because it's this. wrong. It's wrong. It's not okay to do um, Christmas special. But no, I was I was excited, yeah. Cause Christmas special. Every cool show had a Christmas yeah. special. Yeah. You now want I can't to, think you of wanna be one. part no all of it. Um uh, Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Hills. <laughs> that's, 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 that's that like, that's and what, they made fake That's snow. what first comes to mind. <laughs> that's a classic. Um, everyone. Everyone. There's everyone. not a show. There's not a great show that did not have a Christmas special. Okay. Seriously. You can look back through the annals of time, and I say annals a lot, <laughs> and you will see that every great show had a Christmas special. It's our turn. <laughs> uh, so Heidi, I actually wanted to ask, because I, I saw that you were previously in the Groundlings, I'm just kind of curious of... Uh, you know how scripted your part is, how much improv you get to do, how much you get to stretch, like stretch and flex those muscles, or is it pretty much like he kn Zeb knows that kind of voice, knows what Cooch would say, and just be like, this is exactly how you're gonna say it. Um, you get to improvise some. You do a couple like on script, but then in the second season, I got to 
a little on the first season, on the second season I got to write on the show. So I, it was just easier, I think, for him too, to just have me riff in the room when we're writing. And then it's like, oh yeah, that's the direction we should go. Or, so yeah. would you say that you're one of the biggest forces behind that sort of evolution and character development you mentioned earlier? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Just because I... <laughs> I mean, as weird as it is to say that Cooch is cute, I do think she's cute <laughs> and naive, and um, even though she seems raw and trashy, like just this person that's actually, or not a person, a cat person, um, that's just trying to figure out the world and wasn't really brought up properly, so, so yeah. Would so. you say you're one of the biggest reasons that the show was successful? Or you, would you say you're the only reason, I'm the only reason that the show, the show was successful? <laughs> That too is a fact. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. Well, what was it like, you know, going and now becoming a writer and having a voice and being able to influence how your character goes in season two? Um, really fun. <laughs> uh, and there was a lot of pressure on it because the other writers would kind of be like, okay, well, how would you describe Kush? And just like right now, like when you're like kind of put on the spot, you know, it was like these writers were needing like knowledgeable answers for me. And I'm like, I don't know, she's just like a nonsense cat person. And they're like, okay, well, that's not easy to write. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, by the end, it was like, I feel like they got her more by, by just having me like with. Talked about the um, improv in that movie, and now it's, you know, I know a lot of times there's sort of you know, improv stuff that shouldn't be in the show, and it's, you know, not part of it. I know, like, um, Mary Summer Rush always, uh, always did the uh, Frozen Peas commercial, I believe it's the brain, who bust into that sometimes. <laughs> do you ever, like, do you ever just go to the Joe Pesci story sometimes, or, like, when you guys have downtime, do you just start, like, in, in, in all those recordings of it? Um, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever gone into the chat of Joe Pesci. <laughs> But I do try to like, yeah, I try to, uh, um, yeah, get my comedy in there a little. Like, uh, first charge in agony, I had him make some homie the clown references when I was writing. Are you just a big homie fan? Is that you? <laughs> you know, <what's> your <laughs> kind of. Because I just heard that for the first time on stage today. Like, what led to that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. I am a fan. I am a fan. And I've been trying really hard to get Zeb to put in any sort of like I wanted to do a cooch like subplot where like in um, like Scooby Doo or seventies cartoons, it seemed like the Globe Trotters were always showing up. And I was like, Can Cooch somehow like enlist the Globe Trotters to help her out on something? And he was like, No. <laughs> and no one else in the writers are able to just really try yeah, to get a cool. Even the Brady Bunch maybe you don't have the Gilligan's Island? The Gold Charles did show up on Gilligan's Island. So, usually when I am from that stuff, it doesn't work. Or ever. Did you get anything? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not, no, but I'm so new to their process, you know, it was like all brand new to me. So, and new to their process, and I was just lucky that they do love improv, because that's, that's the thing you can get to. But nothing specific that I wanted to shoehorn in. I did not try to get the Globetrotters. But if you did try, maybe we could Now I know, now I know next time I'm going, wouldn't it be wonderful if the now I know. Go